Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Connie Yankin. Uh, I was born and raised in Zurich, Switzerland, um, but have been in living in the U.S. for well over 25 years. So um, I've been here. I love it in the U.S., but I do go back to Switzerland often because both of our families are still over there. Um, also, I have been uh, organizing custom FITs to Switzerland for well over 15 years before I joined Exeter, so I'm very comfortable with that. Um, I love doing it. I used to organize it with the direct public. So I understand a lot of your challenges and your concerns you have. So always really um, very open to answer questions. So you should feel comfortable uh, to give me a call. Uh, Exeter does very high touch uh, custom trips uh, to Central Europe. And we really, I want to stress that we source our own guides and drivers. So we are our, our, our own DMC. Um, we have full control. We know everybody that works with us. So I think that's a, a great um, thing to have. And I, some of you might know Lori here on the picture. Uh, she's standing with one of our guides in Gruyere, uh, learning everything about cheese making. So um, that's Lori, my colleague there. Uh, where do we do it? Uh, this is just a quick overview map uh, for some of you who are new, um, just to see that the countries that we currently work with, it's almost easier to say what don't we do. You see that kind of western and southern part of Europe, we don't um, really handle anything uh, there. And if you're ever in doubt, uh, this uh, map is up on our website, exeterinternational.com, and on the destination tab, you will find that. Our company uh, this year is 30 years old. Uh, we're very excited and proud of that. Um, we will have a spirit week in just a couple of weeks and everybody will gather in Tampa uh, to meet up. So I'm very excited to see all of my colleagues then. And we are also proud, we're two of the partners. Uh, we have been that for 28 years. So uh, that's uh, really exciting uh, for us also. Here we go. So let's start to dive into Switzerland. Um, we're a very uh, uh, most central location, I think, in in Europe. Um, great uh, gateway to uh, combine and travel to any other destination within Europe. Combine it with a trip to Switzerland. We're mostly working with the two international airports, Geneva and Zurich. Personally, I like to Zurich, uh, New Zurich, a little bit more often, just because it seems more centrally located uh, than Geneva. We have great train connections. If you think about Munich, uh, Paris going into Geneva from Milan, so very easy access uh, several uh, times a day there. The port in Basel is becoming more and more important for us. It's not on this map, it's slightly above Zurich. And uh, the with the river uh, Rhine cruises uh, gaining in popularity. It's an ideal uh, pre and post river cruise destination. So we happily do that, even if it's just for a few days. Keep us in mind, I can put something together for you. Uh, no problem there. And also, if you have clients that maybe uh, travel to Italy, but then they would like to go into Switzerland, even though we don't handle Italy, we're happy to take it from Milan or Como and then bring them into Switzerland and uh, plan the trip there. So, um, Switzerland, it is a pretty small country and uh, travelers are always a little bit surprised when we tell them that a transfer takes six, seven hours. They think, why? It's not that far. So I think it's important to understand the topography a little bit better of Switzerland. I just wanted to uh, point a few things out about that. When we're looking about at the northern part, and I would consider that Bern, Lucerne, Zurich, and Basel, that whole top path, is more uh, of a flat territory. Uh, flat, nothing's really completely flat in, in Zurich, uh, in, in Switzerland, but it's rolling hills, and when you're uh, transferring between any of these four cities, it will take you a good hour, maybe an hour and a half of traffic, but that's, you know, all very easily accessible. Uh, the story changes a little bit. 
when we're uh, looking at Interlaken and then going south, uh, the Alps um, are going all the way across the country there and are very densely clustered at some uh, in some areas. So that uh, will affect your transfer time. So if we're looking, say, from Zermatt to St. Moritz, we're looking at a good eight hour transfer and not just when you're traveling on the slow glacier express no it takes eight hours trust me even when you're driving it by car because you're making up and down mountains going through tunnels and it will take a while so just consider that when you're thinking about mapping out planning a trip um to really allow enough transfer time again if you have questions or in doubt uh please let me know and i'm always happy to help Why Switzerland for your clients? I think I wanted to um, touch upon that a little bit. It, I personally think it really, truly offers something for everyone. And let's just go a little bit beyond um, the stereotypes or what we all know about Switzerland. Yes, natural beauty, outdoor activities, um, delicious chocolate and cheese, and beautiful watches. Okay, so we all know that. Maybe that's not for everyone. Um, I think it's uh, a great uh, thing to know also Switzerland, when you're interested in history or architecture, Switzerland's over 700 years old. It was founded in 1291, um, started to be built up, and it was never engaging in either sec uh, First and Second World War, so nothing got destroyed during that time. So we're very proud. We have lots of cities with beautiful old towns, but also lots of smaller towns uh, that are dating back to medieval times, fortification walls around it, and everything's in, intact. Uh, the Swiss uh, take great pride in keeping things up. It's a wealthy country, so um, everything's in great shape. We also have hundreds of castles dating back to medieval times also, and uh, it's not maybe something typical that uh, people think about, but we have hundreds literally spread all over Switzerland. And maybe one of the most photographed and mo uh, most famous would be the Chillon Castle down in Montreux along Lake Geneva. But if your guests are not traveling to that area and they have an interest in a, visiting a castle, uh, let us know. We can find one wherever they are. And so they have um, that uh, experience also. Another um, why Switzerland for your clients, I think uh, a great selling point is when we think about uh, Switzerland has one of the uh, densest public transport system in within Europe. And even our clients often travel by um, private transfers, but they might like to take a, a scenic train or uh, take, you know, an excursion to a mountaintop. And that's where it comes in. The Alps are accessible. For everyone, whether you're an older traveler, uh, have you know limitations with uh, movement, your uh, family with younger kids, no problem. You get access. You will see these views what you see here, and nobody uh, feels left out. And I think that's a, a great uh, selling point. Also, the other uh, fun thing is uh, you get a multicultural exposure in one visit um, with all the influences Switzerland has with uh, several languages and uh, culture. It's almost like a mini Europe trip in one. Um, so you could have the experience if you're visiting for seven to then 10 days, if you want to visit the entire country, you can feel like you're almost visiting three countries. It's a great uh, fun selling point also for families. My kids used to be uh, so in awe when we would travel from one village to the next and then they speak another language and the food changes and, uh, you know, the houses look different. So that's a, a, a wonderful thing to have. So we're, we have four official languages in Switzerland and, um, but there, I would consider three main cultural influences from France, Germany and Italy. And what that does, it makes, you know, the Swiss handle the switching between the languages and cultures 
uh, very easily in a very fluid way. And they're very open minded. They will welcome uh, a traveler from anywhere in the world. They'll make it work. They try to speak to them if they can, you know, in their native language. They're very used to studying languages and make every uh, visitor feel very welcome. They're, you know, open minded, worldly. And I think it, it is a very positive quality to have when it comes to hospitality. So everybody feels welcome and uh, feels like they can move around freely and, uh, you know, find their way and ask somebody for directions or something. Um, the influences also, of course, reflect in the delicious food we have in every area, different influences from Italian to French, uh, German food, and then in the decor, the fashion. So uh, you'll be surprised how... Um, you know, a variety of what you will see. And like I said, ideally, I think to visit the entire country, a seven to 10 day itinerary would be great. If it has to be shorter, we will have to discuss and prioritize maybe what um, your clients are most interested in. The, the three major regions you want to uh, think about, let's start in the South because that's the one that maybe not so many people know. It's the Ticino area bordering Italy to Italy. And it has that um, Latin influence in the architecture, a lot more of terracotta, red homes, um, the, the walls, and then a much slower pace. Also, the, the people are more relaxed and um, kind of it, it reflects anywhere. So that's a really or maybe spending a couple of days just relaxing and unwinding from a trip. I, I, that's a great area to visit, especially also uh, like earlier in the spring, later in the fall, because of the southern exposure and a more of an um, uh, almost like a subtropical climate. They have palm trees growing down there. Uh, it's much warmer than in other parts of the country. So uh, remember uh, that also when you're planning trips early in the spring. The central location, I would consider Lucerne, Interlaken around there, that's more mountainous. Um, it will reflect also differently with the population. Sometimes they're a little bit, you know, more shy, withdrawn because they live up in these mountain villages. So that's an area, a very rich in tradition, also a lot of handicraft things you could see there and experience. So uh, that's, I would say, also still very relaxed, but very different than the South. And then uh, finally, the Northern part, um, Zurich, Bern, kind of that whole Northern region, that's really the economic driving force of Switzerland. That's where the businesses are. Uh, it's much busier, a lot of jobs. But with that, also a lot more luxury, a lot more five-star hotels, high-end restaurants, uh, high-end shopping. So if you have clients that would like to have uh, that experience, uh, probably consider a night or two maybe in Zurich also, and uh, they'll be very happy with that. That leads me to my hometown, um, Zurich. Uh, I think it's a very hip, fun destination to visit it is a little bit more densely populated but um you know still you have a lot of natural beauty within and surrounding the city you see the water the Limmat river here separating the two parts of the old town will lead into the lake so people have fun with the water there they go out on lunch breaks and they go take a swim in the river or in the lake so there's a lot of, it has still a relaxed feel, but it's definitely much busier. And then I would say most of the high-end five-star properties are either in the old town or along the lake. But there is one very unique uh, property sitting kind of where you see that on the hill above, high above the city, it's the Dolder Grand Hotel. And uh, you have, you know, five-star luxury in a beautiful natural environment and within five minutes you're down in the city so if somebody doesn't necessarily want to stay in a city center uh, the Dolder Grand is definitely um, a, a great uh, option to consider 
One thing I want to point out when you're sometimes I have uh, agents that come to me and say, oh, I've already booked a hotel for four nights in Zurich and we'll just plan tours from there. I just want to point out it's really far from the Bernese Oberland, from the first kind of area where you can have high alpine experiences. Your guests will be spending at least six hours in a car and then, you know, three hours on a car wheel train, sneaking up and down the mountain. And that doesn't leave a whole lot of free time to enjoy the mountain. So just bear that in mind. It's it's not the most central location if that's what your clients are looking for. Lucerne. Um, Lucerne, definitely more central. Now we're getting closer to the Alpine region, how it's kind of pre-Alpine region. Is a gem of a town, much smaller than Zurich, a little bit slower paced. Uh, the Chapel Bridge you see here is uh, uh, one of the most photographed images also in Switzerland. It actually burned down uh, years ago and the Swiss uh, decided they will rebuild it, make it look like it used to look. So I think it's a beautiful um, monument in the center of town, connected, connecting the two uh, parts of the old town again, the River Royce going into uh, Lake Lucerne, and then you see all the cafes and you know restaurants lining the water for some outdoor fun. There, uh, we offer chocolate making and tasting of workshops um, in Zurich and Lucerne. Uh, fun thing, uh, it's a small family-owned chocolate here that you can join them and make your own chocolate bar and decorate it and just make it to your liking. So that's a really fun thing that people enjoy to do, especially with, with kids also. We also have just recently added um, a, a beautiful uh, private cruise on Lake Lucerne on an old antique wooden boat. And then while you're enjoying like this, it's about an hour and a half. I just recently did it kind of towards the end of the day that the light was beautiful over the mountains and the lake. And uh, they did, uh, they offered us a chocolate and wine pairing. So we had this delicious chocolate, local wines uh, while cruising on the lake and admiring all the beautiful homes lined uh, on the lake shore. Several mountains uh, surround Lake Lucerne, uh, Rigi, uh, Bergenstock, and Pilatus. So now we're very close uh, to doing mountain excursions with either cogwheel trains, um, regular trains, or uh, cable cars. So this is a great um, gateway. And if you don't, if your guests, again, would say, I don't want to really stay in a city, that's too much for me. Well, Bergenstock Hotel is 20 minutes from uh, the city. You can access the city on a funicular and the, the kind of a speedboat, get into the city. I stayed there with a group recently, uh, last month, that um, tour managed, and it was an unbelievable spot, and yet so close to the city. So uh, you should uh, look into that if you don't know it. Now, if, if guests would like to take... Um, a mountain excursion from here to the Bernese Oberland. Now we're a little bit closer, about two hours away. So that's a lot more doable than from Zurich. So again, very central location here. Looking uh, further southwest, uh, Long Lake Geneva has a completely different mood. It's French influenced. Uh, we see the beautiful Chillon Castle that I talked about here earlier. A uh, beautiful uh, monument to visit. It does attract a lot of visitors in the summer. So if your clients want to get away from crowds, let us know. We'll find them a, a nice alternative. The whole mood along Lake Geneva, it's really about uh, vineyards. The huge uh, uh, Lavo region, a um, lot of vineyards, some uh, family owned, some larger uh, companies there. But that's uh, a big draw. So if um, your guests are into wine, I would suggest they book uh, a tour with a guide with us. And then they have exposure. They can try these wines because these wines, nobody really knows. But Switzerland has a lot of wine producing regions, but they never make it out of the country. They don't. They're small batches. 
and uh, they don't rarely get exported, maybe over to Germany, but they sh they certainly don't make it to uh, North America. So I recommend that as a as an as a nice outing. There are uh, along Lake Geneva three major resort towns: it's Montreux, Lausanne, and then Geneva. And we can talk about what will probably make most sense for your clients. It really depends uh, what other things they have planned while visiting Switzerland. Uh, watch uh, Museum in Geneva is maybe something of interest. Uh, and we have a watchmaking workshop also that um, some clients are interested. Unfortunately, visiting uh, factories, watch factories is impossible. They just don't open up. Uh, to the public, so that's not something typically that I guess we uh, experience. And then lastly, the uh, Ticino region, like I said earlier, the uh, Swiss Italian part of Switzerland. Uh, again, stunning natural beauty, a little bit different. Uh, two major lakes down there, Lake Lugano and then uh, Lake Maggiore, was located next to each other. And then it's only an hour from Como. So whether you're coming from Como, have interest to maybe visit, to get that uh, visit off your bucket list. So that's uh, definitely a possibility to combine it. There are several beautiful valleys that kind of just go off from the, in the into the backcountry of the lakes where you uh, can experience and see uh, like little wooden, uh, not wooden, stone roots because there's on little stone houses, stone bridges. Some valleys are very narrow, so uh, beautiful environment to maybe spend half a day or a day uh, with a guide, possibly with lunch at one of those little family-owned uh, places. So uh, a, a very great uh, local experience. Uh, of course, always boat rides. There's some uh, the Brisago Islands in the lake that you could go visit on a boat. And, um, you know, really to have that Dolce Farniente kind of uh, uh, vibe, but then with stress efficiency, I always like to say. So I think you're kind of seeing Switzerland has a lot, that like, caters to a lot of different interests. Just wanted to quickly uh, point out again on the top, that's the Opera House in Zurich. Beautiful concerts, operas available there. Also in Lucerne, the KKL. Uh, in every summer in July, there's the Montreux Jazz Festival. Held. There's another jazz festival in St. Moritz, so no shortage of music and cultural uh, events. And then the scenic train ride. Uh, for a train train enthusiast, um, really uh, a mecca and a heaven to kind of go and experience that. Uh, never hurts to have a day of peace and quiet, solitude. Um, go up in the mountains. Uh, this cow is my friend that lives outside our family's little chalet up in the mountain. And every fall, um, it's out there. They're out there right next to the houses. So. And then the medieval towns, monuments, remember, uh, we have plenty of experiences like that also. The Alps and hiking. Um, I, let's take the mystery out of hiking in the Alps because I, I get so many times, oh no, I, I'm not fit enough, I can't do hiking. And people are so intimidated when they hear these two words together that they think, oh, no, that's not for me. I'm not a client. I can't do that. But I, I just want to help you and your clients so that they can enjoy and discover the Alps. The alpine flowers bloom early summer, June and July. And uh, I would encourage them to maybe consider uh, hiring an, uh, a hiking guide. We have wonderful guides that we can uh, appoint to any kind of need and skill level. So it can be from a walk to uh, you know a more strenuous hike, but our guides know where to take your guests. And I think it's an important part to 
step away a little bit from the crowd and the cogwheel train and have maybe a little lunch or just even a walk and, uh, you know, sit down and enjoy this beautiful scenery. And I can tell you they're taking pictures and at the end of the day, it puts a, you know, a big smile on their faces when they've had this experience. So let's try to plan a little extra time. So they have a two, three hours maybe and um, have this experience. I just encourage everybody and tell them it doesn't, it's not as intimidating as it sounds or look. The scenic train rides, I want to uh, talk about this particular one that I just took uh, with uh, my group. And we were lucky enough, we traveled in excellence class. And I can tell you, it was excellent. It, it truly was. I felt very pampered. Uh, everybody has uh, a seat by the window. Uh, you get a five-course lunch with wine pairings, uh, private concierge. Uh, everybody has their personal iPad. And think about your, you know, for a minute, you're going through these remote areas over high, high alpine uh, territory on a train and it felt so nostalgic and set back in time but then combined with all these modern luxuries I mean there was nothing left that I could have thought of that I would have wanted or needed during that time it was a really unbelievable memory the entire trip uh, does take eight hours and uh, if you don't have that much or don't want to be sitting on a train that much ask me we can book partial routes and I can help you figure out which maybe is the train route, you know, that's best for your guests, but you could still have the experience even in a six hour trip. Um, so that's absolutely no problem. And then there's, you know, many other scenic trains. I can't go into all of them, but ask me, we'll, you know, plan one. And oftentimes we do a combination, one scenic train and then private transfers just so that we're a little bit more efficient. Hands of luxury, uh, the exterior means uh, we handle your luggage. If your guests come from Paris and have been on a shopping trip and now suddenly have four bags or four suitcases, no problem. We have them covered. They can enjoy their day, travel by train, and we will pick up their luggage, our drivers, deliver it at the hotel, and they don't have a, a single worry uh, about their luggage. So uh, even with families, a uh, little bit, you know, older uh, travelers, it's a real problem when they have to lock their suitcases, change trains. So that's already then, oh, no, we can't do it, but we always wanted to. So now uh, we have uh, that fabulous service uh, for you. Exeter um, is well known for the old fun special experiences that we offer. And on the left, uh, you see me attempting to uh, carve a cow. I was very successful with the help of my fabulous uh, teacher in the back. And that was at Lake Brienz as the wood carving school. So we had a wood carving, private wood carving workshop. And um, he made me look very good. I have a beautiful wooden carved cow now sitting on my shelf here in my office. And then on the top, uh, chocolate making, no problem. You can learn how to do that. Um, maybe not attempt it at home, but certainly with our uh, great instructors, you'll be having lots of success making your own chocolate bars. And then at the bottom is that, uh, you know, beautiful wooden boat that I talked about earlier on Lake Lucerne. Look at that. It was one of the first boats that was operating on Lake Lucerne, and we can now book it. And you have this cruise with chocolate and wine pairings, which is a, a wonderful experience. Uh, another one that we have during the summertime is to visit an alpine cheese dairy. So the cows in the summer are up in the Alps in high altitude, and there are farmers up there, and they get the milk, and they produce cheese all summer that now at the end of the summer will be brought down into the valley for sale. But we have access to one of those cheese, uh, alpine cheese dairies, and not just by hiking for hours, it's actually possible to get there uh, with a transfer and our guide. 
um, can be combined with a hike. So um, that would be a wonderful and unique experience also. Our guides, they put a smile on my face because I just love them. They make our lives so much easier and everybody's lives so much nicer when they're visiting. So I cannot stress enough uh, the tremendous value um, that a guide adds to an experience. Uh, it really goes way beyond, you know, telling you about the history and the architecture of a place. You actually make a friend. Uh, during the time you're visiting and uh, they share, you know, their special spots with you, their restaurants, that little spot around the corner to take a beautiful photo. So they're your, uh, your best friend, really. And I think to incorporate a guide here and there, ask me, well, you know, if it's not possible to have a guide through, we'll, we'll pick and choose where it makes most sense and where we think it really adds a lot more value. It's a truly priceless um, experience. I actually uh, took a tour recently through Zurich. That's my hometown. I thought I knew everything, right? I've been there for all, you know all my life. And I had a guided tour. And she took me to places where I had never been to, I didn't know about. And I left at the end of the day, you know, thinking, wow, that was that was really cool. I, I didn't think I I would see these things in Zurich. So always something that surprises you. So let us know uh, what your clients' uh, interests are. And, and tell us a little bit about them, how they like to spend their day with the guide. And then that way we can, you know, find the right person for them, brief them so that the day is really uh, going to be flawless. And that brings me towards the end. So this is our fabulous team here at Exeter. Uh, everybody is uh, ready and excited to meet you and to help you plan trips. So that's the entire team. It's a really great crew. And um, yeah, so this is me on my last trip. I took a few days off, uh, went into the mountains with my mom and my daughter. And this is me in my happy place. And I will continue exploring Switzerland for all of you. And I just really thank you uh, for joining me today on this journey through Switzerland. I want you to know, call me, shoot me an email, any kinds of questions, really, truly. Um, I'm here for you, and I hope I'm going to be your new best friend. Thank you all. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to get my questions and answers, uh, first of all. Uh, what was the name of the chocolate making company in Lucerne? I uh, I spent ten days in Switzerland in August and loved it. Um, uh, it's uh, Max. It's called. It's a family owned business. So it's not Lind. So it's nothing. Uh, you know that everybody knows, and it's a really a really great story with that company. Um, it's named after their son who has a handicap and he's involved in the business. So it's just a fabulous partner uh, we work with. Great. Um, I know the Swiss trains run pretty well. Italy, not so much. If you can book trains from Switzerland to Milan, do you have full service all the way to Milan? Uh, full service for the luggage, they mean? or uh, Full service... Uh, just the whole kind of train service, whatever you do for train service. I'll jump in with that. Yes, we, can yeah. we can we can definitely do the train. We can definitely do a private transfer to Milan if somebody wants a transfer. Where we can't help in Italy is anything like Italian, like sightseeing in Italy. We don't have any <laughs> Italian guides, nothing. So, but we can definitely get somebody to a point in Italy be it by train and, or private driver. And I think that the, the, what's important is in Switzerland, our drivers will meet your guests on the track. They can go onto the train and help your guests unload the luggage, but they'll meet them there. But when it comes to Italy, that's that's not happening anymore. So, but yeah. within Switzerland, the, our drivers will bring the guests to their platform and pick them up and they meet. That's where the, the, they meet each other. How long is the scenic train ride with the five course lunch? That's the total amount is eight hours. Got you. That's and from think... uh, Saint Moritz to uh, to um, Zermatt. 
that total is eight hours, but you can book partial stretches also. That's you. How, can you speak about activities with young kids? Yes. Uh, so what are like alpine coasts? It depends a little bit on the age of the, the children in the summer. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, water activities that you can do. Um hiking there are uh depending on the ages but mountain biking they have these fun um kind of scooters you can scoot down the mountain go up with the cable car come down on uh, mountain carts uh toboggan run so uh, just to name a few things those are uh mostly what the kids would like and the chocolate making probably it's asking me about this hotel hotel Dreberge uh, hotel uh, they want to go to Wengen, uh, where their family is from. Wengen. Wengen, yes. Okay. Um, they're and, they're asking if you know the Hotel Dreiberge. Okay, thank you. No, no, I personally don't know that one. I've seen a lot of the three and four, so there's no real five star hotels in Wengen. Um, there are a lot of family owned and smaller hotels. Wengen's a car free resort, it's, so it's really a compact, kind of a little bit more remote mountain village. So um, I don't know, unfortunately, that uh, hotel, no, but it's a lovely place to visit. John, the transfer time from Zurich to Zermatt, is it best to take a train or a private transfer? And how long is the train ride versus the private transfer? So they're probably similar, I'd say three to three and a half hours. Zermatt is a car-free resort. So what happens if they have a private transfer, our uh, driver brings them to the station. It's a station right before Zermatt, and then you have to board a seven-minute train to get into the resort. Yeah, it's about three to three and a half hours. You, there's no direct train. You will have to change uh, right. trains. So there's no nonstop train. If a client is interested in a luxury hiking trip, what region would you say to focus on for a great circuit? Um, I think Zermatt is a great area for that, or um, the Bernese Oberland, like the Jungfrau region, has yeah. several great hiking uh, loops. Yep. Can Can you indicate typical per person per day tour pricing? So our packages. So now when we're just looking at grounds without hotels, uh, we're looking at about eight hundred to a thousand per person per day. When we have private transportation, tour guides, entrance fees, or mountain railway tickets, when we're uh, including, we only work with four and five star hotels, like with a, a per diem with including four star hotels and ground, probably looking at a thousand to twelve hundred per person per day, always uh, double occupancy rooms. And then when we come into the five star hotel category, it has a big span in pricing. It depends which hotel it is, but there we're looking at about thirteen to seventeen hundred. Always considering we have guides, private transfers, um, touring. So it it varies a little bit how much touring and how many hours of touring there is. But that's kind of like a, a good healthy budget to um, think about. Yeah. And Exeter does not require. Uh, the agents to book hotels with Exeter, right? Unless they're doing self drive. We we don't necessarily right? when we don't necessarily require that. We can do ground only. Also, um, that's really uh, we we can talk about that. And, and, and I'll just is... jump. Oh, sorry, John. I'll just jump in yes. to say yes. if you if you advisors if you want to book hotels on your own, fine. But please don't ask us to consult on the hotels then. So if you're taking responsibility for the hotels, go for whatever works for you and your clients. <laughs> and then we'll focus on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And, and also what we don't do is just train only. We don't just book trains and scenic trains. We we incorporate it in a package, but we, we're not we're not just booking trains. I think right. I just wanted to point that out also. And is self-drive pretty popular in Switzerland for the trips that we uh, organize for clients or? I haven't done any self-drives, not really in 
all yeah. the time that um, I have done Switzerland, no traffic. Traffic is challenging when you're getting around the big cities. It's very dense. You can you, you have a hard time finding parking. It's super expensive. The Swiss really try to uh, make people shy away of driving because they have this highly efficient public transport system. And if you don't know where you're going and these windy roads, I, I don't know if you're not used to it, I wouldn't probably recommend it. Um, what do your final documents look like? Are you using APP or PDF documents? We're using Access, um, which is um, an interactive app where all of our itineraries are in. So it, we can also print it out or send it to you in a PDF, but it's a collaborative app. Right, Gwen, yeah. do you have anything else? I would uh, say the reason we love Access is not only are you the advisor in there as a collaborator, but so is our team on the ground. And when things are happening overnight, when hopefully you and I are both in bed, our manager on the ground in Switzerland is on that. His name is Andy, and he is watching it like a hawk. He's like more obsessive than all of us put together, and he's managing anything that comes up. And that's why we like using it, because the clients, if there's a flight cancellation, because we're always asking for record locators, if the clients put a message in the messenger, he's on it, and he's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order, in order to obtain a custom quote for a seven to ten day trip, what is the best email address to use? And I think I'll just answer that. I'm going to email all of you a copy of the recording of this. I'll copy in Connie, so you've got her email address, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, reach out to her directly. So I think that's the answer for that. Um, uh, are there trains that can do private cars for a group? Um, you can. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are some trains. Yes. Yeah. With yep. money, all things are possible. Yes, you can, you can hire a whole, yes, it's true. with money, yeah, <laughs> things are possible. And there's so many options, yes. Um, what, would you say to, what would you say to travelers having the impression that Switzerland is one of the most expensive European destinations? Is that a fallacy or is it just like most key cities in the developed world? I I'm definitely think it's at the higher end. It's comparable to the Nordics. I think, um, and with that, you just always want to bear in mind, uh, people are really happily employed there. Um, they, you know, they take great care of their people. They have salaries, they have vacations, and they're happy to go to work. So that's the other side of it. Um, it's just, you know, a, a little bit more social thinking. It's not socialist, but it's higher salaries. It's a high standard of living, and it's definitely on the at the upper end, yes. If I jump in with that, I would say to yes. advisors, like the, the ground component is just as expensive as Italy and France, where mm -hmm. you see a difference is, like I feel like every hotel in Paris somehow is insanely priced and there are a handful in Switzerland that are really at that super high level. But I think you find more reasonably priced hotels overall than you would mm -hmm. in like Rome or Paris. Yeah. Yep. Does your does your all inclusive tour packages include hotel? Also include meals? Breakfast. Just breakfast. Breakfast only. Yes. And then, what about uh, what is the general track if it's non winter season? So spring, summer. What's the usual track of uh, of a seven to day trip? Where are you starting off and finishing off? Or is it all over the place? It's it's really all over the place. It depends what the the, the travelers do before or after the trip, uh, what they'd like to see, how many trains, and that's what it can make it so challenging because you have all these components and you have to make sure it makes sense. So there's no backtracking. So that's where you know I can help with that. Um, it's all over the place, really. Yeah. And what's the biggest difference between a winter visit to Switzerland or a, a non-winter visit, would you say? Well, um, you know, in this, say you're going to the Alps in the winter, you will see it, it's full of skiers. So, and then there's some places you can maybe walk, but you're very restricted. So you won't have that alpine flora and fauna some regions in Switzerland in kind of lower elevations can get very foggy, lots of gray days. Um, so that's something uh, to to know you have to know about. So the fog kind of sits there and you always would have to travel 
further up towards the mountain to get above the fog and have the sunshine. So definitely a lot less blue sky and a lot less sunny days. And then the mountain areas are flooded with, you know, winter sports. It is uh, the Christmas market scene in Switzerland strong? Yes. Yeah, that's something very popular. Uh, lots of different places offer Christmas markets. Um, similar, you know, when you think of Austria, Germany, that uh, warm, fuzzy feeling, the stalls, the, the glue wine, the mulled wine, and um, just a lovely festive ambiance in, in the cities, yes. And lastly, in terms of ski, how does Exeter incorporate ski or not incorporate ski with their trips? I So this is my first season here. I really haven't done much uh, ski trips. I think in generally, Gwen, right, we're not really um, selling ski packages. If it's combined, if somebody wants to ski two or three days, and but then also maybe visit some other uh, cities in Switzerland, I think we can do that. But we're definitely not your um, provider for packages, ski packages that, you know, have everything included just for the week. Like that. That's not usually what we would do. Yeah. yeah. There, there are wonderful companies like ski.com mm -hmm. that focus just on skiing. And we we can absolutely incorporate it in, in something yes. that's a bigger package. We just don't specialize in ski. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I've skied in Switzerland. I can help if somebody wants to go um, a ski, you know, go to their mock and wants to ski for the day. I can help them with renting equipment and getting them a ski guide if that's what they want. It, as long as they also, you know, they tour and do some other things. Um, if you book Virtuoso Hotels, would Virtuoso amenities be included if Exeter booked them? Yes. yes. 